Music, an absolute monster of a record, courtesy of my very, my very, very special guest in the building right now, Mr. Michael Gray. Michael, how are you, sir? I'm very good, Ronnie. Nice to nice to have uh, to be in here, actually. <laughs> so you do these monthly shows, but it's the first. <laughs> I know. So, first, so, so you actually, I mean, because you live a couple of hours away. Don't you? I do. So um, my shows, I record, and oh, I. Yeah, from my own studio. Technology, yeah. technology, Save the driving. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what a wonderful show it is too. Thank and, you. And uh, it's great to have you on board. Now we did uh, a gig together. I mean, we were different rooms, but we did a gig together in uh, Brighton not so yeah. long ago. Yeah. And uh, we sort of bumped into each other backstage. And I said, "Michael, you got to come on the show because we play all your records." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're on the station, and like, I'm one of these people. Like I've had Dave Leo. I've had so many great artists on. Never had you on the show, and I was like, "Come on, we got to do this." Oh uh, no, I, I was very, very chuffed. You asked me. I mean, I love your show. Uh, well, um, you know, always, always listen to it when I'm in the car. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's <laughs> nice. So, uh, so welcome to the show. Then look, well, look you know, I, I don't even know where to start because you've just done so much. I, I've kind of tried to list a little bit of it, but it's not, it's not like you've done like one project. You've worked with. Um, Another guy, was it John Pern, as yeah. part of Full Intention for yeah. years? Yeah, broke yeah. out. I mean, I think you still do. Are you still doing stuff? For Full we Intention? haven't done anything for a little while, but um, yeah, we, we 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 have done quite a lot over the last <laughs> yeah. last twenty years. Yeah. So there's the Full Intention. There's the Hustlers Convention. Yeah, yeah. There's the Michael Gray mixes. There's the Michael Gray radio shows. There's the Michael Gray project that's come in as well. So, <laughs> I mean, I first of all, I've got to ask you how you fit it all in because I know what I do is a lot. And you do like five, ten times as much of what I do. So how, how do you get it all in there? I, I, I think it's routine. I mean, I literally, I'm in the studio at 8.30 in the morning and I work right through to about six. I'll take a break. Ah for about an hour and that's it and i i I, uh, I work on about four tracks in one day but i wow. will flip between them so it stops you working on the same thing and thinking it sounds amazing and then the following day you think why did i spend so much time it doesn't sound good you know because if you, if you keep flipping between different projects it actually it's quite good you hear it uh with fresh ears mm. you know you go back and think what was i thinking of that riff does not work take right. it out and then other times you're like oh I didn't think it was very good and it, and you realise you've got something really special there so mm. so yeah kind of it I don't work at weekends that's reserved for mainly DJing obviously yeah. that's kind of ironic considering we just played the weekend so the weekend is is like where you sort of party and DJ most of the time yeah. it's really interesting uh, I'd like to touch on that the fact that you say you start at 8 o'clock in the morning say it's really you treat it almost like a what? It's a nine to five, but an eight to. What? It is, yeah, like yeah, yeah, a yeah. regular job with your your lunch break and everything else. Yeah, yeah. Which is the first time I've kind of heard that. <laughs> I think my, cause it's not very people, rock and roll, no, is it? No, no but it, I think what it what it is. Most producers or remixers, whatever you want to call it, or producers really, um, will kind of say, "Ah, oh, get in the studio at eleven o'clock," and you know, I yeah. do a couple of hours. You know, I'm online a little bit. You know, what I mean, I've, <laughs> I've, I find that quite frustrating. Um, if I was going to do it on a full-time basis, I think that's what, how I would have to do it. But, you know, in terms of how you do it, that's quite, um, that's quite an interesting way to, uh, to approach. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I love, I love being in the studio. It's such a buzz. It's my happiest place. Mm. And uh, even if I don't feel that great, once I go in and I just start mucking around with ideas, mm. all of a sudden all the problems go not that i have any problems but yeah, yeah. we all have it every now well, and then we all do. We all exactly do. and it is is a great place for me and um and the creativity to, seems to flow i mean I, I it's my own studio i've been i've self-taught so over the years i've learned it all myself so okay. i don't rely on anybody else i can just right. do what i want to do so there's no you don't use an engineer you no. program yourself yeah what about musicians yeah i will bring in musicians that's for sure um you know if if for example there's chords or where i want to go to my head and i can't play that i'll right. get someone in um and pay them to do it yeah. um you know might get a, a lot of bass lines i tend to put in myself mm -hmm. um i'm one of these I'm, I'm not really a musician but i'm just someone that with a computer i can just put all the notes in where i want on the grid and you've move got them the ear. around. I, I, you've got yeah, the I ear. I, the, the riffs are in my head, so I can just. I tend to just put them in and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, but then I, I, I always. Um, once a week, I go to a studio in London and I spend about an hour to two hours with a, a wonderful um, engineer. And we go through two or three of my tracks for that week. And he will just say, 
yeah change that do that do this and then i'll come out with the finished okay article so. i mean that would explain the volume of music <laughs> that you put out there you do i mean like sometimes you'll go oh, i've got a couple of bits for you already and then you'll send it to me and then someone else has got another two things so i'm like what, what, what happened there do you know what I mean? you get, but you know you, you sort of get music everywhere which is a beautiful thing but it would explain yeah. the amount of records that you put out re- re- whether it's a remix or a new record yeah the downside is that i'll wake up at something like four in the morning and i just can't sleep for a, an hour because all the riffs are going round and round in my head ones that I, the, the choruses that i'm working on um and also new ones that i've never even thought of there's yeah. riffs i've got in my head ready to go in and you've got to get it out i have to hum them in, into on, on my iphone just so I can put them in the studio. I was about to you say, do you go in it. and do you go in and like rig up the studio and put that in, or do you just you put it on like a memo? Yeah, I'll put it on a memo. Then I'll go in and then I'll, I'll try and play what I've heard in my head. Right. But these can pop up any time. I could be in the car and they come in. You could play a record and I think that's really good. That's inspired me on your show. But <laughs> it's when they come in at four in the morning and that's the only downside to it. You right. you can't switch off. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you do, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I love it. Really. A, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the very beginning then because i mean off of mike we was talking about i played a record there uh sweet thunder everybody's singing and you was talking about being at the lyceum when he was i don't know 15 16 yeah, years I was old? 15 and 16 i used to go and see greg edwards at the lyceum it was called the best disco in town yeah. and i'd be there queuing up at eight o'clock with my sister <laughs> and her boyfriend <laughs> yeah. trying to get in yeah um and, and you would get in would you would get in, i right? would get in okay, yeah cool. yeah don't know how because i had a baby face um and um but i did and the music that greg used to play um is what inspired me and on his soul spectrum show which obviously is still going on to this absolutely day absolutely legendary yeah and if it wasn't for greg i don't think i would be so inspired for music so when i met him for the first time properly at margate i was a proper fanboy <laughs> <laughs> you'll love that Rick, he's, he's such a top man as well he's he such is. a legend he is. um so would you say that was the kind of um era that inspired you to go into a direction musically like making music or was it before what was what was you what did you grow up listening to beforehand then, uh, going out? i always uh, i've got four elder sisters and two of them were always playing really good music so they'd have all stylistic shy lights oh, wow. so that's all i heard through the bedroom wall wicked all those sort of records so and then i inherited all their record collections <laughs> <So> <laughs> perfect you inherited it or you just <laughs> i think it cost me 15 pounds to bite off my sister wow yeah all these and uh yeah so you still got those records i've still got them yeah 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 yeah. i still play into this day the stylistics all the old avco stuff oh my god tom bell is an absolute legend so i I really really i'm uh, i'm such an old uh, old i'm sorry i'm such a soul boy you're a soul boy you're a soul boy that's it that's it um i I discovered that actually when we were doing that i said it to you earlier on we was doing the uh the sunday sessions we have Brandon Block, Ricky Morrison, John Jules, and you jumped on board. And like, it was like, wow, it was just such, uh, there was a, a musical melting pot of all these kind of different minds and brains and, uh, you know, all the DJs that had been out. But from a younger age, you know, it yeah. was just lovely to see and to hear everyone's kind of take on, on music at that yeah. point, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, oh, it, they, I mean, it was a, a weird time for everyone, but it was great for us. Mm. Um, and one thing I did find out, Brandon Blocker announced to me that he used to come and see me uh, at the age of 15 at Tropicana Beach in Luton, was where I used to DJ when I was 18. It's the first club I ever worked in. Wow. And I said, what, you used to come? He said, yeah, I used to, see, I used to come up to you that night on a Friday. He said, you were there, and I couldn't believe it's I amazing. had no idea Brandon yeah. came to one of my gigs. <laughs> he, he got everywhere in Blocko. He did. Uh, he got everywhere. So, okay, so <laughs> you, you had like a, a great sort of um, beginning then with your sisters playing great music, yeah. going out. When was the first time that you kind of, um, you know, uh, touched uh, a mixing desk or a turntable? Or did you start DJing first? Yeah, I used to, at the age of 12, I started doing uh, our local church hall um, once a month. Uh, under 16s discos which my dad would organize and help me yeah. and we built up the equipment so i was only 12 um, and the records i would be playing would be 1978 1979 that kind of 1980s sort of stuff so it'd be everything whispers and the beat goes okay. on all that stuff mm. and um, we had 120 kids every 
every month without fail wow. and I absolutely loved it and that was kind of and then I went on to doing the school discos which we've all yeah, done yeah we all did you some know, of them yeah. they were the best yeah. um, uh, and then I started working in bars and clubs and my first job was uh, the park in Kensington mm-hmm. 1984 I think it was okay um, and then I moved to Nottingham I got a residency there um, and I used that's to quite a, that's quite a shift isn't it I know well the manager moved and he said would you like to come with me and he said I and I didn't really want to but he said look it's, a, it's two rooms he said I'll tell you what I'll give you Saturday night soul funk room he's, and that, that was it so I moved up there just because <laughs> of that Saturday oh, wow. night that's all uprooted to not yeah, yeah. Uh, residence and, and this is amazing. before house music comes this would have been 1986 so okay. I was playing records like Twilight and, and that was um just amazing yeah um yeah claim to fame was cameo came in when i was djing and seriously i hung out with them and i was like wow because they just played at rock city just before and so it's, it's a big learning curve mm. and then obviously house music come in and then i started wanting to produce right okay yeah. well pause there because i've okay. got to do some traffic and travel um and then we're gonna have a little break and then we'll come back and i want to talk to you about the production side of things well there you go here he is again with a remix with one of my favorite people actually i love terry walker do you know terry really well i don't but I, don't? I love her voice and oh my god yeah i've, I've remixed that's the second one i've remixed with terry's so uh, how vocal did that remix happen then uh ridney came to me and said would you like to remix it so and and that was it really okay. uh, and we, i did it about a year ago and right. um and then we obviously have to wait till that's mad you know, right. i've got a very exclusive mix of this coming uh, and it's a neo soul version oh brilliant yeah yeah yeah. so yeah but that i love that version because it for, compared to the the original I, I did love the ridney version the artful and ridney version and that was the version i was absolutely smashing but when i heard that i was telling you off and right i heard john jules play it and i was like What's that? You know, you know. <laughs> we had a little bit of two and eight, and I went right. Come on, let's have it. You need to send it to me. But I it's, such it to me it's such oh, a great song. It's such a great song. Simple yeah. but effective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so I, I I did try and completely change everything, and then in the end I thought, no, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. It, it, the chords that on the original I think are the best that, mm. that they get. So they, they've got there. So I've kept it as it is. For sure. <laughs> so Michael, we touched on the fact that. Um, uh, you, you know, you was doing uh, a few sort of school discos, and then you got you moved <laughs> to Nottingham and started a little residency there, um, of which Brandon Block came and saw you then, <laughs> uh, and that was kind of the start of you doing your thing. And then you got into the production. So it was, was it quite soon after you was, you know, you started DJing seriously that you was like, you know what, yeah, I can turn this, you know, there's records here that I would like to sort of start to emulate or, or you know, make my own records. Yeah, I, I was very inspired by people like Shep Pettibone, Jelly oh, right. Bean, and arthur baker and stuff and um and then the remixes were starting to come in 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 the um late 80s i i, I kind of thought oh, i'd like to have a go at that i think i might be able to do something that's i don't know just, <laughs> <laughs> just don't blow my own trouble i thought i could do something that more palatable but um right. and, and it kind of worked from it went from there but it's it's a long you know it, it takes time um, yeah it does and then i started working um with a guy called john pern um who <laughs> we we then put together a group called hustlers convention a lot of disco cut-ups this is early 90s yeah uh and then we went to a pseudonym called greed and then after that full intention and full intention is the one we've kept right uh, for well 20 years now wow. so yeah we've had a lot of fun i think i've got i've got some hustler convention bits but they're quite it's like i can't do you know what i've only just got my my records back otherwise i would have gone through and i would have just i would have just blinded you with some signs and gone look, look, look. <laughs> but um yeah i remember because you used to sort of just cut up old disco things on that yeah for it? the hustlers yeah and mm. we, we, uh, paul trouble used to play a lot yeah you know used to love it when you'd play it on a saturday night oh he's played our tune you know we thought we'd made it big time then you see did you um <laughs> try and kind of make it sound like an american yes yeah oh yeah there was that that kind of snobbery wasn't there um amongst the dj fraternity i would say more than anything else uh if it wasn't like an american sort of funky funk record or disco record or even a house record later on it would get snubbed a little bit it did because the 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 trouble is then 90s uh, a lot of it was just big piano house sort of records and when you started to do something groovy and funky and had this kind of new york edge to it Mm -hmm. um you weren't taken seriously so that's 
why John and I, for our first release as Full Intention, we did an EP, and on there was a track called America. It was a cover version of Patrick Gervais' I Love America. What? And we sent it, a Bill Brewster pressed them up in New York, the copies, and we had them all shipped over. We changed our name. If you look on the original copies, um, I'm down as... God, we made American names up, trying to think. <laughs> John, John, I was Curtis Silvers. <laughs> I took the Silvers from a solo the records. Silvers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Curtis and, and John was Herb Scott. So, uh, right, yeah. okay. And, uh, and it, it worked, because yeah. we had everybody from Tony Humphreys playing it to pete tong to mm. you know all the people i mean like wow I you think, had them fooled i think we fooled them all yeah. you know or either Fantastic. that or they actually just liked it for what it is i don't know but anyway well so. i think it was a, i think it was a, a common uh, thread of, amongst sort of I mean, like i said to you earlier on i spoke to dave lee and he did a pretty similar thing with a lot of the stuff that was on Z records back oh, then dave and definitely the quark thing yeah. um you know together forever raven yeah. May. he did know? the same mm. yeah and, and that's the way we could we could cut through mm. really it's a shame it had to be that way I know but you know it is what it is and here you are now do you know what I mean going hello uh, so that's brilliant okay so um, you're going to do you're going to do the mix at 20 to 6 after we get into that I could talk to you for hours this is like it's just flying by what i need to do i need to do some traffic and travel gonna drop a little mix for us at 20 to 6 after yeah. that want to touch on your new material because okay. obviously we've been playing um the track that you've got with uh, uh tatiana owens yeah you uh, which is brilliant. you gotta remember you yeah. had you're gonna make me love somebody else the the jones girls cover which we yeah. played earlier on uh so i'm taking it there on the new project okay which is is that, is that oh, yeah absolutely right in saying yeah, that yeah and I, I earlier asked you off of mic there's a track that you did that we were hammering probably what a couple of years ago brother brother oh yeah mate yeah. that Kimberly tune Brown. Man. oh that tune <laughs> so you know even if it's for me you need to put it on the album uh, it uh, is a I'll, I'll do it for you Ronnie Go absolutely on, Mr. Grey love you to pieces <laughs> right so traffic and travel then Michael's going to jump in the mix with uh, at 20 to 6 with us right here so make sure you stick around for that well I knew that would happen he's blown me away he's, uh, I'm like well, I haven't got that why haven't I got that Michael why haven't I got that so he's uh, uh, quite kindly going to put a little folder together for me but absolutely brilliant we have got to go to a break we've got to get some news we're a little bit late uh, but we're going to get some news and come back more conversation with Michael and he will tell you exactly what he played after these well i think michael knows this is this is one of my favorite records back in the day anyway um sharon red never give you up a prelude classic i don't even know where to sort of continue michael because um the things you do you know you get classic prelude records you get classic west end records you get classics from so many legendary labels and you just do this to it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Before we talk yeah. about this, though, tell us what you played in the mix. Uh, right. Well, I started off with a brand new remix I've done of Genie, uh, BB and Q band. Right. Okay. It's not coming out to about October, so that's a, that's an exclusive for you, Ronnie. Nice one. Thank it's you. It's a bit much. of an edit that one. Yep. Um, then my single you've got to remember yeah. uh, with Tatiana Owens. Big tune. Check out the video. The video's out yeah, there. Yeah, there is well. a video. Um, uh, then JW McGee. I've just finished that. That's the first play of When We Party. Um, not sure what I'm going to be doing with that one, but I'll get you a copy anyway. Please. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, a remix of um, from Groove Assassin of You Bring the Sun, which is getting released um, first week of July and. Um, that's Seamus Harji, myself, and Phoebe Edwards on vocals. Right, so hold on a minute. Pause there for a minute. Because yeah. when you played it, I was like, what is that? <laughs> I need this, right? So Groove Assassin. Yeah. That's his mix of it. That's his He's remix. killing it at the moment. He's done He's, like that vision remix. He's yeah, done, oh my yeah. God, He's amazing. doing really good. Um, we released the single on my Sultra label last year, and then we right. thought, well, let's get a remix of something a bit more housey. Um, yeah. What he delivered is actually still quite disco, but he's so good. It's like, yeah, yeah we're going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he does, I love what, he he does. what I love about Groove Assassin is he's kind of from my era when it comes to the R&B as well. So he'll sample loads of old sort of classic R&B records from the 90s and just four to the floor them up. Yeah, no, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he's done one with Southern Freeze over the top and he won't See? give it to me. He's really? Doing, he's doing what I do to other DJs. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I right. understand though. Uh, and then after that, Grant Nelson and his uh, new mix of It's Not Right But it's okay that's risk assessments new single wow coming on real people that's uh, got monica blair on vocals uh and then i finish with my remix of can't stop turn you on which is obviously the silk classic there you go and i, <laughs> I haven't got that version so uh 
um, yeah, but brilliant, absolutely wicked. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to uh, drop one of these on you. <laughs> Thank that, you. That just signifies how much of a fire mix that was. Um, so yeah, hopefully you'll come back and do, do another one at some point very soon. I'd love um, to. You're all over the place in terms of DJing, but also you've got this project coming out, which I, I want to make sure we speak about before we run out of time. So an album en route from Michael Gray. Yeah, I've been working for the last year, um, uh, just writing um, and producing these tracks. So then it, they take longer because um, I'm I'm got a hybrid going on with, for example, the drums. I have a, a, a live drummer. In this case, I, I've been using Derek. Mackenzie from yeah. um, Jamiroquai, mm. uh, live percussion, uh, strings, horns, um, everything. Um, it's kind of trying to keep it modern disco, but you kind of feel as if there's an old school feeling to it. So mm. hopefully the idea is hitting a younger market and an older market at the same time. That's the idea. And just bring those melodies back and chord changes, which you don't hear so much. Don't in hear that. Music. It's all chord cool changes. <laughs> key changes. Key oh changes, my gosh. Yeah. Absolutely. That was always for me that kind of you know giving away that was always the the the, the, the key if you like to yeah. a hit record i thought it was it, it, it so many is. hit records have a key change in them you yeah know what I mean? yeah and um it, it, it's it's great because when you start playing these records out it takes longer for them to bed in with everybody because we're all used to you know a famous a cappella over the top of you know a good groove and before you know it that can go number one in the dance charts but when you do something original like for example where people like dave lee or shapeshifters or myself do it, it takes longer mm. for it to you know people to get into it but once they got it but you think at least i've made something original yeah and we need to do more of that i think is important i still love all my remixes well you got a cover on there you haven't know. you you've done a jones girls cover Absolutely. which is coming on there which yeah. is you know it was influenced by the philadelphia international stuff i mean oh, you talked about yeah. greg edwards who was the boss of yeah. uh, philly international back back then as well yeah so something i touched on um sort of off mic was um you're doing an album um and I've spoken to a lot of producers. We know a lot of producers that have done house music albums, but you just said, well, it's not actually all going to be house music, which is no. interesting because yeah. I find it quite, it's not me actually. I just find that a lot of producers, when they put out a sort of four to the floor album, it, it doesn't really work. So yeah. what have you done to kind of make it different? Um, well, the tempo is going to be one or two soul tracks on there. And like we yes. were saying earlier, you know, I'm a big fan of people like Tom Bell, you know, very famous writers. Yeah. Um, and it's trying to create that sort of, hopefully, that kind of feel. I mean, the Jones Girls is quite slow, really, for, you know, and that that won't be on the album because that was signed to Glitterbox. So unfortunately, that won't right. be on the album. Okay. But um, on my Sul uh, Sultra label, um, the album will come out. And yeah, the tempo would be very it won't be all house right, okay. uh, that's for sure okay well i can't wait to hear it what is it a double album is it going to come out on vinyl at, you know yeah gonna when do roughly the vinyl. When can the it won't be till next year because there's still I, I i work on records then i go back to them and then i take a break then i go back then right. sometimes i might change all the chords thinking i can make this a bit better <laughs> you know <laughs> but I, well then I, I suppose it's for me to say will it ever come out because if you go definitely sometimes do you find sometimes if you do that you think you know what i've maybe maybe have overproduced that is that is that oh you can easily do that yeah i tend to produce i put a lot more in to start with and i slowly pick all the bits and right. take it out so it appears more simple than it really is that's okay. the idea um but yeah I, I absolutely love doing it and again you know the artists that i'm working with like tatiana rowins um they're in new york so i have to get those recorded over there separately mm -hmm. and you know goes backwards and forwards it takes a little bit longer but uh, it, it works it's a very expensive process when you're using everything well nearly everything that's live, that's well. live except so, the keyboards and who else have you got on there you mentioned uh degsy um derek mckenzie from uh Jamiro quiet tatiana owens on there is there anyone else that you can reveal um, uh there's well kelly there? says on quite a few kelly obviously right. sung uh, the jones girls um cover um th there's a few and i'm also working with a lot of newer artists which is important to me so it's trying to get well these are new artists they mm -hmm. are new i mean tatiana owens i actually met her about three years ago uh at valerie simpson's uh bar sort of club really? yeah in new york oh, wow. where you can just go up and sing and this girl um i was just upstairs eating with my girlfriend and then suddenly i heard she sounds good <laughs> and i asked if someone could ask her to come up when she's finished and that's how we sort of met 
and it right. is nice when you feel you find someone who's nice you know is young and mm-hmm. blah 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 and so and, you kind of works. sort of spotted her like, yeah from, uh, yeah but we didn't actually start <laughs> working together until about probably a year and a half ago that's where the all the year ago when the, the properly i mean right. on these tracks but it's such a great record yeah, we're gonna play you. that we'll play out with that actually uh play out the interview the other thing i really wanted to because we, we haven't even i played it earlier the weekend that must have been a game changer for you because that was top 10 mad yeah. hit you know like yeah. must have catapulted you in terms of a producer yeah uh, did that uh, take you to another level it completely changed everything absolutely everything yeah i've never seen anything like it. monster so. record <laughs> i didn't expect it I, really? I mean my aim was always i always wanted to make this is you know we have to have goals in life don't we sometimes and my <laughs> goal was to make a, a classic dance record that might be played in 10 years time uh, you know you sort of think maybe at a wedding i yeah. didn't think this record would actually go to 20 years wow uh, and then and keep hitting a different de- generation 2003 2003 2004 yeah Wow, yeah, I, I didn't incredible. expect that to happen. But you know what, though? You listen to it. We played it earlier. We uh, play it a lot. It comes up um, from time to time yeah, as one yeah. of our super hits. And it sounds so fat and fresh still. Thank do you know you. what I mean? So it's that, it stood the test of time. Um, so, I mean, how did that work? Because obviously you were... I'm thinking, how long was you sort of... Uh, not split with with John Pern. Obviously, he was doing a full intention thing. Yeah, was that yeah. one of the first projects you did? Yeah, um, post uh, that. Well, John and I, we we were remixing so many artists. It was crazy. It was, it, but it felt like for me, it felt like we become a factory. And record labels would say, "Could you just remix uh, your Jennifer Lopez just like that one?" And you know, can you do right. Brandy just like that? The creativity for me uh, was just going out the window. I just right. felt like it's. So uh, we took a break, and I wanted to do something a little bit different. I went. On off to produce this band sold them to island records <laughs> <laughs> who's the band it's a band called portabella um it was kind of more of a i don't know it's just kind of quirky sort of throwback 80s sort of thing um yeah and that that was uh, i spent a year doing that i came away from house music just to concentrate on that sort of style yeah and um after that i then went back and made the weekend and it just came together in <laughs> <laughs> did you get a call from John saying, yeah, "Did you what happened there?" No, John did. John he did, did body rocks as he well. He did to the be body fair, rocks, so he's not complaining. Yeah, he's yeah. done very well with that. So everything's cool. And and John and I, we, you know, we talk all the time because we have a, a big back catalogue to look after. Wow, I mean, like, so that must have been a, a, another sort of moment in terms of your DJ bookings must have gone through the roof there I'm guessing I you're going to laugh at this though but I just had uh, well I had three boys under the age of 18 months had twins and a son who's already 18 months and it was so crazy in the house that um, I didn't I stopped DJing for about a year and a half uh, because I just couldn't I was so tired it was only Simon from Shapeshifters said to me come up and play at the AKA bar look I, you, I can put you on early if you want I said alright then yeah great <laughs> really? I was ready to go to sleep by 12 you know <laughs> Give this me. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I actually oh, stopped that, DJing at the time, so I didn't cash in. Right, right. Um, but that, do you know what? Off. That's admirable because you've you. you've gone. You know what? I've got got some youngsters. Got to, you know, be a be a dad really yeah. full time. So that that's a beautiful yeah. thing as well. But listen, it's it's paying off now. Though. <laughs> <laughs> it's still all good now. Um, okay, this, are you right for another sort of ten minutes? Of or course, so? Ronnie. Because no um, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the conversations. I'm sure the myself family are loving it as well. You know, the 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 ins and outs of Mr. Michael Gray. We're gonna just do some traffic and travel and then come back and then we have the, the large little section with Michael in the building there's so much more I want to ask you ah uh, as a tune mutually that we like here I'm in the studio you're truly running around with Michael Gray it's been amazing you got here at what sort of five o'clock and we haven't stopped have we yeah. <laughs> stop rabbiting about music um, hopefully the my soul family will be uh, appreciating um, what you do Michael actually because you've got a, you're steeped in history then you've worked I mean I'm just going to reel off some of your remixes here like um, Sharon Red which has played some D Train Lufa you've remixed Tina Marie Donna Allen which is a, a yeah. big one at the moment actually Leroy Burgess Tennessee I mean the list is ridiculous <laughs> how do you approach doing a remix for say a Gene Khan who or a Tina Marie who the late great Tina Marie who the record if you look at it is already perfect so how yeah. do you go okay i'm gonna i'm gonna tackle this behind the groove for instance yeah. i love it it's getting played i play it and it's it's giving it another lease of life for me in, yeah. in club land it means i can sort of steer it in a little direction of sort of force to the floor come out of that or into it 
but how do you approach doing a record like that is it daunting because you've got someone like tina marie as a step like as stems yeah i mean again we were chatting earlier i used to play all these records the first time around so i appreciate when you touch these records you can't just get rid of the bass line it's about the bass line so you know various things but so i'm trying to remixes like that i do sympathetically i try anyway and like you it's so i can play them in a house club and you know i can go from house into uh, and and keep the flow with that and it works um and um it just it takes a while it's a lot backwards and forwards and i try and pick all the best bits that i've always liked and people normally sing along and put them where i want them to put them right. so they're sympathetic with donna allen when i remix serious that one i decided to turn it completely on its head all i mm. used was the vocals and then i just did brand Style new again yeah i thought i'd turn it into a disco record it was an 80s sounding very <laughs> you know those sort of very serious type of beats mm. and big shoulder pad sort of record wasn't it serious <laughs> yeah, it was, i thought it? i'm getting rid of all that right um so yeah it, it depends on each one but again it's it's just trying to treat it with a lot of care mm. and it's just great having the multi-tracks for most of these where you've got all the individual parts how do you get buzz. the multi-tracks because obviously they're not easy to obtain you've no. got to phone up some, ha- some of the labels are kind of you know discontinued there's a lot of them are defunct yeah how, how do you how do you get a lot of them well in most cases i have a a a, 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 well, he's a friend of mine uh <laughs> philip west oh, okay. who, who uh who, who i normally uh contact him say i don't suppose you've got the multi-track now he 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 just likes acquiring these he buys them and what have you but really yeah 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 um but uh, and other times he can actually rip off the separate parts as we know that you've got the technology here as mm. well and you can um with tina marie he just was able to get rid of take out the bass line from the original oh, the okay. drums and the music and the vocals and then i can sort of you know i haven't got as much control but at least i can do something that i can play out myself yes okay yeah, yeah. so is that the the with, with a lot of the stuff you do i mean you're going to get the the uh, permission to do these but some yeah. of the things you just say you know what i'm just going to do this because i want to play it and if anyone else wants to play it, you can have it exactly I, I do it so i can play it out and if anybody you know uh, likes it says like yourself so oh could i have it i'll send it to you that's fine <laughs> that's all the time and then i just monitor to see how the record's doing right. and then i'll get in touch with a record label and say would you be interested in signing this they normally ask where did you get the multi-track from and i have to say oh, oh i can't i can't <laughs> remember <laughs> you just said his name on <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, did that. sorry about that <laughs> that's all right i'm sure you'll be all right. i don't think you'll get any calls yet He's probably... <laughs> uh, but okay so i mean that's this really interesting as well like um with ha- luther vandross there's one difference i only had the vocal and i i rescored all the music so i got string section in right. um and blah 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 and and restructured everything is but that a never too much yeah never too much um uh, the only problem with that one is sony decided they wouldn't put it out because it was too house oh. but he did house records with masters uh, of work like what's you know I, d- I don't even want to go there oh, it's such God. a shame unbelievable so, yeah and what's, that, the, what's your favorite remix you've done oh that's really really hard i know it's like trying oh, to say who's your, your favorite child child yeah. yeah uh i just don't think i could answer that i, yeah. I, I love them all but, um i do i did really enjoy working on um ingram dj's delight oh. which, I, which i did with mark knight that one yes, we did yes. that together big shout out to mark knight yeah, we're gonna be dj's we birthday mark. party next week i know i'm gonna warm up for you <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know about that but <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what I mean the legend is Michael Gray going on before me I'll take it all day long um, oh, that's amazing we'll, we'll play that out we'll play that record actually and um, yeah listen I mean uh, what what is left to, to say I think apart from I'm looking forward to the album coming out is Thank there anything you, you want to tell the My Soul listeners the Michael Gray fans um, what you've got coming I know you've got the album you said that's probably not going to happen until next year but I know there's yeah. lots of stuff there's loads of projects that you've got sort of coming out and also some gigs and, and yeah parties as it's, well. It's, well this week's busy um i'm in paris thursday night for a, a, a sort of new disco night with bob sinclair and ultra nate and sam carson and uh, th- uh friday i'm straight back into abbey road um working on a a new project that i can't say too much about but if it goes off it could be quite big but now, hold we'll on a minute see. <laughs> i know you can't say too much but i've been to abbey road 
Normally when a, an artist, the DJ goes to Abbey Road, there's some orchestral stuff going on. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so okay. Yeah. So, I'm looking forward uh, to him. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's early days, but we'll, we'll see. And then uh, Saturday, obviously, I'm going to see you at Mark Knight's party. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and then first thing in the morning, I fly to Ibiza on Sunday morning to play at Glitterbox. So I'm excited about that. Let's just, before we play a track um, and sign off, Glitterbox It's high. The yeah. nightclub is called High. Yeah. And... You DJing in the toilets? I am. <laughs> Where else? There's only one place to play at Glitterbox. It's in the toilets. High. It's in the toilets. Absolutely. I mean, it's not. It's okay. So let's let's just make it clear. It's not any old toilet. <laughs> it's it's not any old club. You know, bog. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, that, that the toilets there and yeah. I mean, it, got, they haven't named it anything different. It's just the toilets. Uh, no, it? sometimes I heard someone called it. Um, oh, something with WC Wild Corner. I've heard it called oh, the okay. Wild Corner. Yeah. It, it, it is actually. that really does describe it quite <laughs> yeah so quite, uh, wc accurately. for toilet and wc for wild corner wild I guess, corner right? and that's where you're gonna be tomorrow then tomorrow uh, night uh no next sunday next sunday so, yeah all right. it all kicks off okay listen yeah. michael thank you so much for coming in you're welcome it's been a Ronnie. real pleasure i could have we could have spoke for a lot longer <laughs> but let's say maybe we should do a part two for sure when are you on the radio next by the way uh i'm gonna be on next saturday night next yeah. saturday yeah right here so what is yeah. it you do the last saturday of the month here. Uh, last, last saturday, saturday of every month uh seven till nine so um, no yeah. adverts None. Just straight None. Michael Gray. Yeah, a lot of gems. mixing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honour to have you. Thank you, Ronnie, for having me. Uh, and uh, look forward to all the stuff that's coming out in the near future. Let me play you the track then. I'll play you the track, My Soul Family, that Michael has done with Mark Knight, who's going to be the birthday boy. We're both spinning at his birthday next week. So let us both wish him a happy birthday. Yeah, happy he's birthday, a, Mark. He's a happy hammer like me as well, he's Mark Knight. And uh, look forward to cashing up with you next week. Uh, well, likewise. Look forward to it, man. Cheers, man. I actually can't remember if it was was it you that sent me this one, Michael? Or was it was it or was it uh, Mark? I think it might have been Mark. I think it was Mark because he sent it to me. He said, "Don't play it yet." <laughs> 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 and I went, "Are you serious? I can't not play this." And I played it straight away, and my phone just went berserk. But yeah, oh. there you go. So my soul family, if you didn't know now, you know Michael Gray and Mark Knight on the uh, remix of this one for an absolute classic. I always loved the original Ingram DJ's D Light.